Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm um, standing on the edge of Block 2 at the end of August 2020, and we're looking at an interesting transition period uh, in the end of the harvest season through to early flowering. And um, particularly if you have late dropping varieties, you can actually have a crossover between the last harvest and the next season's flowering. Now, what you can see up close here is some early flowers. They're quite green looking. This is a, almost certainly a 344. And um, flowering can happen in all sorts of early stages. You've got the very baby flowers like you see here, uh, all over the tree. And then in different parts of the tree, for whatever reason, you can see those white flowers up there in the distance. And they're fully open flowers ready for pollinating. And you've got flowers in all stages of development, basically, um, on the tree. And so there is a period of time where there's a lot of flower all in bloom. Um, but, you know, it, it changes from variety to variety and often really from just tree to tree. So there, you know, in a bunch of flowers, you'll see one mature flower that looks like it's at the end of its flowering and a bunch of others ready to go. Now, compared to last season, it's definitely a better tree health situation than, than what I saw. Um, the last season, or the first season I was here, the flowering was based off the previous autumn's feeding and the orchard hadn't had any food the previous autumn. This time's different. We've got some nice flowers on there. And now is the time when you protect those flowers from a pest called lacebug. Lacebug will get into flowers and eat at the base of those stems that you see and they will turn a whole flower black and that's how you know you've had a real lace bug infestation you can't see them they're not big enough where well, you can if you shake a flower and then catch it on your hand you'll see pollen and bits of rubbish and stuff but you can actually see tiny lace bugs there but you won't see any uh even at even at close range which i'm at which i'm at now so what do you do with lace bug? Well, the only thing you can do is spray. There's a few different products you can use, but um, one I've decided to use this year is called Transform. It's a new systemic insecticide. Now, one of the problems with systemic, well, systemic insecticides, just as a brief description, it's, a, it's an insecticide that gets inside either the sap flow or the the, the inside of a plant in some way and then kills whatever is trying to eat it so therefore if there's something like a lace bug sucking on the sap of a plant it will suck a poisonous substance and die the problems with previous versions of systemic um, insecticides is that they feed through into the pollen of the flower and can affect bees and that's absolutely the opposite of what you want in a macadamia orchard. Bees are, bees are the king. But if you know they've they've found this product in Transform, which is a systemic insecticide, but is not in the old range of organochlorines and organophosphates. And in fact, its withholding period on macadamias is zero. That is, you can harvest the same day as actually spraying. That's how harmless it apparently is to humans. And once it's fed into the tree and, be, and has this systemic effect on lace bug, it, uh, it doesn't affect bees because the insecticide doesn't get into the pollen. It only gets into the sap, uh, which is what the lace bug is after. So it's a very promising product. Um, it's also, like most new insecticides that are under patent with no generics, a very expensive product. Um, they're charging me, I think, something like $1,300 for five litres of the stuff. And my whole orchard of about 2,700 odd trees will take possibly seven or eight litres to cover the whole lot. Um, now the cost is approximate. You can never work it out exactly. And you can never work it out by number of trees either. But 
you know, in my old blocks here, like the one you're looking at, block two, um, they're big trees and you need a fair bit of spray. So, what do you use to spray macadamia trees? Well, today I can show you. This is, it's not mine, this is a great big John Deere tractor and attached to it is a fairly typical spray rig that's used on macadamia orchards. This is a tornado sprayer. I think they're Italian. They're one of the main brands of sprayer used in um, in macadamia agriculture. If you come take a closer look at it, what you're looking at here are spray guns, like nozzles that are pointed up. Uh, and they're pointed up to spray pesticide under the canopy of trees. And those guns go literally all the way up to the top. And at the very top, there's these other nozzles that basically spray like fine hoses right up into the top canopy of trees. <coughs> now, one of the reasons you want to keep tree height under control is so spray coverage can effectively get to where the flower is. And in old overcrowded orchards, particularly in the middle of the block, you uh, you tend to only get flowering and and growth up at the top of the tree. So the higher it is, the harder it is to keep um, pest controlled. This massive turbine fan is what drives the pressure to the actual guns and pushes pushes either the pesticide, the fungicide, out through the spray holes. This is what's called a double-sided spray. You can get single-sided ones which take less horsepower to drive but they'll only do one side of a row at a time. This does both sides of a row at a time or if it's doing the end of the row you can turn half of the half of the sprays off. And the great big tank here is a 2000 litre tank which is uh, which is used for the various chemicals and there's procedures for for cleaning it, that sort of stuff. It attaches to the PTO, which is the power turn, I think power train output, I think that's what it's short for, of the tractor, and the tractor's horsepower needs to be right up there to drive a sprayer. You're talking at least 100 horsepower for most spray models. And um, this just goes up and down the row. This wheel's nearly as tall as I am. And, um, and away it goes. Now, some people do their own um, spraying. Uh, a lot of people contract in, and uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can buy your own chemicals and get um, the contractor to spray those, or you can have them supply the chemicals, which means you don't have to have a lock-up storage of chemicals on your own farm. Uh, the chemicals won't expire because the contractors are going through lots of them and they, they use it fresh. I choose to have the chemicals supplied to me by the actual contractor. It works out more sensible to me and also I think a little bit safer. Um, I was hoping to show you video of it in action today spraying, but that won't happen because at the moment there's some gusty wind around and uh, some, some south westerly and southerly winds blowing up as well. And uh, as, I, as I've mentioned in a previous video, you don't go spraying when the winds are uh, in a position where they could cause spray drift. It's very important not to do that. So, sorry that I can't show you this thing in action. Uh, there are videos on the Australian Macadamia channel where uh, my mate Garth shows you his spraying uh, from inside the cab of a tractor and it is well worth a look. I'll probably put a link in the, um, in the episode description so you can have a sticky beak yourself. But there is an up close look at uh, the equipment used to spray a macadamia farm and the reasons why we do it at this time of year. Especially important this time of year, you'd call it the most important spray of the season because no flower means no nut. And you, no matter what you spray after this, if you've got no flower, you'll have no nut set and it would all be a waste of time and money to fertilise and, um, and prepare for a crop. Um, other than the wind, which is actually quite pleasant, <laughs> quite pleasant to be out in, it's a, it's a lovely day in Nutkin Farm. I will hopefully get an update 
to you in a week or two and uh, we might go back and check check on some of the projects that I've got going at the moment uh, such as my baby trees um, hope you have a nice day wherever you are and thank you for watching bye bye